Yes, you can do video editing in Photoshop. If I choose File Open and navigate to a movie format, I'm going to start with this QuickTime movie. QuickTime picks up the extension .mov. Now, if you're on the Windows platform, you will need a QuickTime player in order to play this, but this is the native format of my Nikon N1 camera. So if I double-click to open it up, Photoshop automatically brought up a timeline, and it gave me a little help explaining what video groups are. Video groups allow you to combine multiple video clips or add text, images. If you could envision anything you could do with layers, you could start to see the power of video editing in Photoshop. I purposely shot this around 5 in the evening with poor lighting, so later I could take a look at adding an adjustment layer to make it less yellow. But let's explore the timeline. The timeline was approved to the last version of Photoshop, making it more clip-based, more comfortable for people who are accustomed to programs like Adobe Premiere, Adobe's leading video editing application. But if I've been using Photoshop for years and I don't want to learn Premiere, I haven't learned it yet, I can do simple edits right here. Actually, kind of powerful edits, too. So let's start out by just hitting play to see what we're working with. Computer images have two types. Raster and vector. Raster and vector. I do whatever you say. Yes. <laughs> Now, I should have told you to make a mental note as we're watching the timeline. I want to see how far in we've reached when you hear my voice saying raster and vector. So if I scrub back in the timeline, I'll make a note at the 513, hit play, and vector. And I missed it by a hair because I was watching it as we went, so I'll scrub back a little bit further to 426, hit play, Stir and, and still off, you'll get there. And this is common workflow for video editing. You want the perfect cut in the perfect spot. So now I'm at 408, raster, and that looked about perfect. At 408, it's just before you hear me say raster. So we could pause at that shot, and there's a few tools that are very simple. Where the playhead is. Now, this is important. This red bar is called your playhead. I'm at 407 right now, but I could choose to go forward or back just by scrubbing. This is called a scrubby slider, where I slide forward and back to see a little dance. But as I'm observing this, the red bar is your playhead. So if I want to cut a video, I want to get my playhead to the right spot. I can scrub it here, or I can physically pick up and drag the playhead back. And technically, this is called scrubbing the timeline. Whether you scrub using the playhead or whether you scrub using the timeline indicator, either one works the same. I find this the easiest, and I'm watching the numbers to know where to start. So if I click the scissors to split at the playhead, it's broken this one movie into two pieces so I could edit out my voice. So now, I can hit the play button again, or spacebar. Raster and vector. And he's just starting to say it, so sometimes it's very delicate editing. 621, I'm marking this, hitting spacebar. Okay, about 620 is probably perfect, and you'll go through this where you make edit several times. Let's see if you could catch that split second where he's saying it. Okay, so 619, 618, 617. I try to go a little further back to make sure I'm at the right time, but spacebar is just the same as play. So you could keep hitting play, but when I'm watching this number, it's easier to have one hand on spacebar and then watch my time than to keep moving the mouse around, in my opinion. Okay, so 617 looks about perfect. We'll try 616 just to be sure. Okay, that's good. And then at this spot, I'm at 616, 6, 
seconds, 16 milliseconds, I will cut. And now I don't need this portion at all, so I can click it once and press delete or backspace on my keyboard. Now we have a rough cut between these two portions, but let's scrub back to the beginning and I'll hit the play button to see how I've done. Computer images have two types, raster and vector. I do whatever you say. <laughs> Now, I actually might decide to leave that hi guys in and the look on his face, or maybe I pull out the audio. You could mute the audio or replace the audio or put in sound like dun dun dun. That would be a nice effect. But my goal with this lesson is just to show you taking one video where there's small portions you don't want and achieving a final edited piece. So I'm going to save as, and I'll keep a PSD file as my master. So this will be the end version, which you'll see. And there are lots of formats you can choose to export, ideal for YouTube and social media sharing or your own personal use. But for now, your goal with this lesson, hopefully, was to see how easy it is to pull out information you don't want in a video and go from one spot to the next. Now, before I finish with this exercise, that was a very rough cut from here to here. So maybe I'll do a little transition. And transitions are also super easy, in my opinion. Here, we have different types of transitions. Fade, crossfade, fade with black, fade with white, fade with color. I'm going to do a two-second crossfade. So I could simply drag it in between the two clips, and you see how long two seconds is. So that might be too much, but it's fully editable. And transitions is another way to hide your editing or indicate to the viewer that you've made an edit, but not make it so abrupt or quick. So now, if I click anywhere away, a lot of people just hit return or enter to make that menu go away. I'll slide back to the beginning and play one last time. All right, so I might need a little more time at one end or the other, so I could play with the ends of those. I could grab one clip and make it a little longer, shortening the next clip, but I'm not going to go too far into playing, as long as you've got that raster and vector in my voice out and the child clipped from saying one thing to the next, we're in good shape. And just because I can't let this go, what I will do for my last edit to this portion is shorten the duration of the crossfade. Maybe one second is really all I need to show this off. So I'm going to press return or enter to make that go away. As you noticed, I could scrub again. And you do see a nice little one position to the next. I'll scrub just a little bit forward and hit spacebar to see how it plays. Have two types. And I'm happy with that. So good luck with video editing in Photoshop. Many people are building up a multitude of videos these days, and every now and then there's just little portions you want to edit out to give overall a better ultimate video to publish and share with little flubs removed, as if your angelic child said this all perfectly in one statement. So this has been your introduction to the very powerful, and in my opinion, pretty easy video editing tools of Photoshop CC.